shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely pay the tent. Huh? I will do what? Give the tent unto thee. Genesis 28, 22. He made a vow to tithe if God bless him. The two scenarios show tithe as honor to God from whom all blessings came. Also, it's not worthy that both examples depicted what was done once. All of them did it only one time. You will never see Abraham tithing after that one time. And you will never see Jacob giving 10% after that one time. In essence, there are lessons from the tithe. Now, Romans 15, 4. Watch this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, we are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Things we are written for our learning. We can learn from these examples. In this regard, let us examine the Old Testament, the law on Titan. There are several texts on Titan in the law. However, the following is very instructive. Deuteronomy 14, 28 to 29. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shall lay it upon up within thy gates. And the Levites, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hands which thou doest. The tithe was meant for the following people. The Levites. Why the Levites? They were priests who we are not to have property in the land hence they need to support them numbers 18 20 to 21 since they were to be at the service of the people they had to be taken care of paul equates new testament ministers this way paul in the epistles equate new testament ministers this way first corinthians 9 13 to 14 do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar even so had the lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel notice paul never asked believers to give them ministers tithes rather it was to support them materially and no particular percentage was given we are instructed to care for our ministers. That's New Testament. Did you see Old Testament? Did you see New Testament? Members are to care for their ministers. Generously. No percentage given. Second scripture. First Timothy 5.17 Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine for the scripture saith thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn and the laborer is worthy of his reward the phrase double honor means double wages not just a mere handout if a man of god is laboring over you that man of god should be paid double salary double wages you don't muzzle the ox that traded out the corn. The man of God that ministers to you in spiritual things, you owe him the physical responsibility of looking after his welfare. And it was double honor, double wages. Galatians 6.6 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things the phrase good things imply good valuable not just anything not just anything in other words our teachers must be well taken care of again notice that the word tight was not used neither was there a percentage to the given rather wages reward good things why is this so Paul had taught how to give in his letters. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Every man, according as he proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, 
for God loveth a cheerful giver. No percentage. From Paul's explanation, you, the believer, are to decide what wages. You are the one to decide. Good things are and support for your ministers. This must not be done grudgingly because ministers ought to be well cared for. This refers to support and caring for their needs and not appetites. You are to care for ministers' needs and not appetites. And I will explain to you what I mean by appetites a little later. Care for the needs of ministers. Number two, the lessons to get from the tithe. Strangers, widows, fatherless, the poor, and needy among us. In Malachi 3.5. This category also is our responsibility. The epistles teach the same. Romans 15.26. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So the church in Macedonia did a contribution and sent it to the poor in Jerusalem. So it is the responsibility of the church to take up an offering and send to believers when they are in need. I don't see any reason why you should give to the poor and put it on newspaper. You are embarrassing them. All these people who say our churches are doing philanthropy, our churches are doing welfare, then they will gather children and film them and snap them and advertise them. You are making caricature of, the, of those people. That defeats the motive for the giving. It defeats the motive. We are not giving for show. We are giving to help. And our help must be done in a coded way. So that the people help can have dignity. You couldn't pay school fees. So I gave you school fees. Then I snap picture with you. And then I put it on Facebook. This brother couldn't pay school fees. I thank God for using me to pay his school fees. Clap for me. You like that kind of thing? How many of you like it? Anybody? No. All these people that in the name of church, they come around, they gather African people who look malnourished. Then they make pictures of them. Using them to raise money. And the money never gets to the poor. It's hypocrisy. Don't use somebody's poverty for your branding. You're not hearing me. Don't use somebody's poverty for your branding. To add value to your brand. People's disadvantage should not be your promotion. That's not Christianity. Look at God. The prodigal son was coming. The father didn't wait for the boy to come. Because if he had come, he would be seen at a disadvantage. He's coming from pigs with poverty. The father ran and met the boy outside town and stopped him. Dressed him there. Clothed him there. Covered his nakedness outside. Nobody saw it. Then came back with the boy. Giving the boy dignity in restoration. That is the way God behaves. And if you are imitating your father, you should behave like that also. That's why the Bible says your left hand should not know what your right hand is doing. The reason is because as your right hand is reaching out, if your left hand knows, it has taken value out of the giving. Except you're giving for show. And if you're giving for show, you have your reward already. So number one, we care for our pastors. Number two, we care for the poor, the widows, the fatherless, the underprivileged. We give to them. We reach out to them in a very honorable and respectful fashion. Now look at another scripture where the church reached out to the poor. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1. 
Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. James 1 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this to visit the fatherless, widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. In the book of Acts, the church took care of widows and the poor. Acts 4 34 to 35. Acts 6 1. The tithe of the Old Testament law was meant for this category of men. That is why people pay tithe. To take care of the Levites, to take care of the poor, the widows, and the fatherless. Today, our giving is for pastors, church members who are poor and need support. And it was meant to honor God. Our giving should do the same all the time. Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. No Christian should find it difficult to honor God with his income. However, it must be clear that there must be no mandatory percentages foisted on anyone as taught in the epistles. It is key to note that Paul gave instructions on how to give. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. That there be no gatherings when I come. First Corinthians 16 2. Observe that the word God was italicized, which implies it was inserted by the translators. Thus, the text can be better understood as this Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as he has prospered, that there be no gatherings when I come. In other words, as you prosper, you give. That is, your giving should be proportional to your income. Notice again, Paul did not mention the tithe or a particular percentage. He need not use percentages for men born of the spirit. We don't use percentages for men that are born of the spirit. Somebody say, I am born of the spirit. I live in the spirit. Now say it very loud. I walk in the spirit. Now louder, I give by the spirit. When we give by the spirit, we don't need percentage. No. Abraham said, I've lifted my hands to El Elyon. That I will not take anything from you. Lest any man should say, he made Abraham rich, but God Almighty. Everybody shouting very loud, God is my source. God is my source. Say it very loud. God is my source. Louder. God is my source. Exactly. If any man promise you, don't put your heart on it. You didn't hear me. If any man promise you money, don't put your heart on it so he does not destroy your heart. Let your heart stay on God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great peace have they that love your law. Nothing shall offend them. Put your heart on God. If men promise you, praise the Lord. If they do it, praise the Lord. If they fail, praise the Lord. Don't build your life on gifts from people because all the people can go on strike. But your job can go on strike. God will bless the work of your hands. If your amen is louder, the work of your hands are blessed. Somebody shout, I receive grace for industry. I didn't hear your amen. So what do we do with the tithe? We do not pay tithe. We give. But even in giving, there is no percentage. And then we are gleaning some lessons from the tithe. We have seen the first lesson to support our pastors. Second lesson to support the poor, the widows, and the needy. Say with me, myself, my money, my life is Jesus's. Jesus, Jesus is my life. All that I have is his. I am not stingy. I am Libra. I am Libra. I am generous. I'm just like my father. He is generous. He is liberal. I am liberal. I am generous. Just like my father. I'm not stingy. I cannot be stingy. I am not stingy. I don't have the nature of stinginess. I have the nature of generosity. Can I hear a powerful amen? Stand up on your feet wherever you are. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I engage industry. I make money. I make money. 
like everybody else makes money amen, amen. now say to your neighbor the children of this world are not wiser than me they used to be wiser than the children of light but the children of light have woken up they cannot be wiser than me I didn't hear your amen. amen. They can't be wiser than me. Amen. amen. If they make money, I make more money. Praise God. Somebody say, well, the reason why I cannot give to pastors is because men of God have cheated me. That men of God cheated you doesn't mean there are no correct men of God. Again, some people have been so wounded by certain pastors. When we went to Ghana and taught these things that we're teaching you and began to open their eyes to the fact that there is nothing like the gospel of prosperity. There's only one gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said to me, there's a particular sister I know. A particular sister. A particular prophet gave them prophecy. And she took plenty of money and came and gave to the church in thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they told her that the money will multiply. And she's being wrecked. Big, big people in Ghana who took hundreds of thousands of dollars and gave to church with the hope that God will multiply and give back to them. Wrecked. And they are hoping God dashed. And they are wondering what kind of God is this? They are bitter. And they are finding it difficult to trust any other man of God. Because they've been abused by so-called men of God. Give them false hope. Took time to explain why God does not multiply money. It's not a staff of central bank. There is only one institution in any society giving the sole legal responsibility for the production of money. It is the central bank of that country. Under the supervision of the governor of the central bank. And God is not the governor of the central bank. Neither is he a staff of the central bank. In fact, if God really multiplies money, if God rains down money, Jesus wouldn't have made friends with Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and be collecting money from all of them. Jesus, who is God, would have sat down in a room and just, money would just be falling, falling, falling. He, Judas, pack, 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 let's go. But Jesus didn't do that. That means God doesn't do that. It was people that were engaged in industry that give to Jesus. Women who were in business give to Jesus. Men who were in business give to Jesus. Jesus had to depend on people to give him money and material things for the gospel. Meaning that even today, God cannot reach out to people until some businessmen and women make their monies available. I'm teaching here. Please, if you're hearing me, say, I hear you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God does not multiply money. Work multiplies money. Business multiplies money. God doesn't multiply. Kele de gogos. Krenda gola de bege. Jejo jujalana. Receive ideas. Receive concepts. Receive connections. Receive relationships. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree by the favor of God your mountain will stand strong thank you father are you blessed this afternoon well give Jesus the greatest shout of celebration <laughs>